Presented by Caltech. children. I can remember the first day I committed myself to service to children, September 26th, 2007. I was a freshman in high school ready to take on the night shift at the maternity ward of Lucille Packard Children's Hospital at the Stanford University School of Medicine. What started as rudimentary paperwork flying through magical shoots of the medical center eventually evolved with my maturity to stocking up bassinets and making baby hats. <laughs> Fun fact, but really, it's a really awesome fact. One baby hat is made out of a one-foot piece of tubular cloth. You make it the same way as you make a corn husk doll. Anyways, if I think about my time at Lucille Packard, those four years, I can say that those were some of the most transformative years of my life. To be honest, sometimes volunteering in a maternity ward can be very dull. More often than not, I was trying to beat my record of making 75 baby hats in an hour. Or I was cleaning up the tea service, generally on Sundays and generally on Mother's Day. Oh, God. But the Kodak moments of the antics in the maternity ward and the well baby nursery were standouts. I remember smiling when, in the pre-selfie era, fathers would try to be both in the frame and out of the frame with their video cameras, trying to record the baby's first bath or watch the baby snooze while wearing one of the hats that I probably had made 15 minutes earlier. I would smile walk up to the father, show my credentials of a navy smock and a bright yellow badge, and proceed in the job of a videographer, recording some moments that the father will cherish for a lifetime. And don't get me started on the holiday season. OK, you asked. I will talk about it. <laughs> One night, it was the night before Thanksgiving, and I became a bellhop. There was this one grandmother who made the one-hour trek from San Francisco Airport to, Stan to Stanford, California. And I had to carry her N plus one bags up to the second floor. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt. But once the grandmother was reunited with her son, her daughter-in-law, and her new grandchild, she miraculously pulled out a cheesecake from one of the bags I was carrying. <laughs> I got some! <laughs> and let's fast forward a bit to the 2008 Beijing Olympics. One father was so ecstatic that, one, he had a son, and two, his home country of Argentina won a game of basketball, <laughs> that he tipped me $15 for helping his wife and newborn into a car. I was only had finished Spanish 1 at the time, so I didn't know how to tell him. Because of HIPAA policy, Lucille Packard does not, require, does not allow me to take tips. I don't know if there's a Spanish word for HIPAA. If someone knows, <laughs> let me know, OK? So I donated the $15 back to the hospital, and to this day received donor emails. <laughs> but the hospital and the volunteer program had this policy that volunteers should try to stay seen and not heard. But sometimes not being able to say anything was the hardest. One of the main duties while I volunteered at the maternity ward was performing a discharge. A discharge is the exit protocol for a new mother, where I help the mother into a wheelchair while she carries her newborn child make sure the father or other family members have all her bags from the room, wheel them out to the valet, 
make sure they get into the car safely, and bid them adieu. There was one time I performed a discharge. It was towards the end of a shift. I helped the mother into a wheelchair, but I noticed she didn't have a child. So I could feel this fog of sorrow in the maternity ward. I could not pin pinpoint a reason as to why. So while the father was still grabbing some things from the room, I quickly step aside, ask the nurse, where is the mom's child? Normally the protocol is the child's in neonatal intensive care unit, and the parents will come back in a couple days to make sure the child's perfectly okay. One word, stillborn. I could, I still do, feel this sinking feeling, and the next 10 minutes are just horrific. I have to wheel this mother out of the maternity ward, and she can see through the clear glass windows Father's adorably trying to take selfies. And she and her husband are leaving childless. <sighs> Let's fast forward a couple of months. And I'm doing my regular duties in the well baby nursery, stocking up bassinets and enjoying the fresh smell of clean diapers. <laughs> I notice a mother with a three month old child, and they seem out of place in the ward. While the mother is away at a lactation clinic, I ask the desk nurse, what's the mother doing here? Just out of curiosity, I mean, I should be able to put bassinets safely, right? The, uh, the nurse explained to me that this mother was a single mom and she had Down syndrome. She was fighting for custody with the state of California so that she could keep her child. And staying in the hospital under the nurse's strong and watchful eyes was her way of showing that she could be a mom. I never saw the end of the case, and I didn't say anything. But from what I saw, I knew that mom was doing a great job. Now we fast forward to junior year of high school when I was in Spanish 3 this time. And sometimes I'm volunteering not just in the maternity ward or a well baby nursery, but miscellaneous events. This time, it was the pediatric heart transplant Valentine's Day party. <laughs> it was so cute, I swear. It's like little kids. You just wanted to pick them up and hug them, but we couldn't because of hospital policy. Oh well. I remember seeing two kids, two boys, introducing each other, not with a handshake, but lifting their shirts up and showing surgery scars. My arms were full of pizza boxes, and I did not know whether to laugh or to cry because these boys who had gone through such a traumatic experience were sharing their scars like biker dudes with tattoos. And I think about the parents and the children and thinking of the pain they went through in those hours of surgery. And for once, I was left speechless. I think about my time at Caltech. I still continue service with children. I volunteer with the RISE program by teaching mathematics to high schoolers. I make myself purposefully dizzy when I try to teach seven-year-olds the physics of figure skating. And it brings such joy to my heart to see their eyes light up. They smile, they laugh, they hug me waist down if they're seven-year-olds. But not a day goes by when I don't think about my time at Stanford University's Children's Center. Though I'm not going to become a medical doctor in the near future, I know that someday I want to help children. But for now, I'm going to remain seen and not heard for the sake of the children. <laughs>